three, two, one. Change. No. Yeah. Okay, start again. Brr. No. Merra. Okay. Do you know what? Start off again. I'll do it once more. I'll do it once more. <laughs> oh. Take that bit out. Hi guys, welcome to CYC. My name's Nathan Hayes, and today I want to talk to you about two different perspectives to see and seek friends through. The first perspective is maternal versus authoritative or pragmatic. And the second is environmental versus personal. There's also a rare trait that I want to mention at the end that I personally find extremely valuable. But anyway, let's jump into it. So let's start with the first perspective, the maternal versus the authoritative. Now we start with the maternal friend. The maternal friend is kind of self-explanatory. It's the person who is always there, is very caring, kind of minds you, is very forgiving, always takes your side in an argument, and if they do voice an opinion, and it's kind of hit or miss whether they will, they'll kind of just, they'll throw it out there and they'll kind of leave it there. They won't force it, they'll trust you to take it on board in your own time. An authoritative friend then is the friend who pushes you, who asks what the next step is. And irritatingly, they are the friend who will hold you accountable to what you say. And they won't shy away from any like genuine disagreements or kind of opinions that they might want to voice. It's important to note that for this perspective, people tend not to be hardwired. You yourself more than likely fall on one side or the other, depending on who you're talking to. For some people, you'll be very caring and you'll let them away with murder. And then for other people, you won't. And you'll give them a kick and you'll try and keep them on track. And that's because this is a built pattern. And I'll explain that now in one moment. Now each person watching this video will have their own personal preference on this ratio between the two sides. Some people don't like to be pushed, like at all. And then other people kind of need it. And then others just thrive off it. They love that kind of competitive nature. So if you're unsure of where you kind of sit on this, I find that an average is about two pushers uh, for each kind of maternal and caring figure. This might not be yours, but it might be a place to start, not too sure. And you want to try and find this ratio in all aspects of life, or at least in all the kind of core aspects, the things that you hold dear or the things you talk about most frequently. So if you go to the gym or something like that, try and have it there. If you have a hobby of like yoga or woodwork or whatever it is, try and have it in that. If it's at work, I know that's kind of a bit harder, but maybe try and have it there. But this can be anything. This can even be for holidays. It doesn't matter. And I know your friend's not going to go on holidays with you every time. But that's not important because the friend doesn't actually need to partake in the event. It just needs to be what you talk about. So maybe your work friend will be someone that isn't at work, but is still caring and still takes your side or still pushes you and says, eh, the boss could have been right. So for all I care, your authoritative pusher friend for the gym can be some like, 24 stone guy that doesn't live that lifestyle at all and it doesn't matter as long as he holds you accountable and pushes you keeps you on track that's still score one for team push you know there's an old saying that states that your mom helps you stand up straight and your dad pushes you forward and i think that's really relevant for our topic today because and it says more than you think it says that Without your maternal friend, without that mom figure, that carer, your da the dad figure, that pusher, it's going to grind you into the floor. And it's going to be difficult to get back up, especially if they're still pushing. But then without that pushing force, you're left standing up straight with the carer, but you've no direction, you've no aim, you've no, there's no motivation behind you. So you're just left with your own motivation. And that's a maybe. Because if there's no kind of pushing force in any direction, it's kind of it's hard to kind of build up your own momentum. And that can lead to hopelessness and just depression. 
So you want to try and find the balance between these two forces, between being able to stand up straight and being able to walk forward. So how do you invite either side of this into your life? Well, if you're feeling overpressured or misunderstood or just a lack of caring and you want that maternal friend, then you have to be vulnerable. And I know this might sound intimidating for people. You don't want to overshare. You don't want to be that guy or something. But what you might realize is that just telling them, merely informing a person of a vulnerability is enough to build this type of relationship to start like. And hopefully it develops into a deeper connection then. If you feel stagnant, without aim, or just generally unchallenged, and you want that kind of pushy, authoritative friend, what you need to do is show strength and invite critique in. Because no one wants to be a bully. No one wants to be an asshole. So if you're not showing the strength to withstand their clumsy attempts at pushing you and keeping you on track, then they're going to shy away from it. Because they don't want to push you too hard. They don't want to be the guy that grinds you into the floor. So they need to see that if, if you are being over pushed, that you're able to kind of stand up and be like, back off. Like, I need you to push me, but at this particular moment, I don't need a push. I need to stand up straight again. You know? The second perspective is far easier to explain, and it's because you can't really control this one. But it's still important to note because it might help you kind of realize what style of friendship works for you best. So, this is your perspective of your environmental versus your personal. And I'm actually going to explore this just by using examples. And I'll use it with the previous spectrum. So we'll talk about environmental friend first. So your environmental friend that's maternal, that's caring, that friend. That's the person that you have tea with. It's the person you watch a movie with or play games with. It doesn't matter. What matters is that they provide an environment that you don't really talk about the topic or the whatever's giving you stress at the moment. But they provide an environment that you kind of melt into. So no matter who you were coming into the wherever you're meeting, that when you leave you just feel relaxed, you feel better, you feel just calmer. Then on the opposite side, your environmental pusher friend is the friend, it's your bullpen at a lawyer's firm. It's where like only work gets done, it's all pump, it's all action. And there's, so this can be like, for people who aren't lawyers obviously, this can be like the library at a college, where like you meet up with this friend at the library and you just don't talk. It's all about, so like, it's all about business. All, the whole conversation is all about whatever your kind of, the project is. You see like a lot of like young musicians do this and th like no matter who you are, like all they talk about is this kind of like whatever their current project is and they're just pumped, they're amped and you kind of leave that situation just feeling a bit more motivated. That's what that friend is. Then on the other side is so your personal style of friendship. Okay, so your maternal, your caring personal friend is the friend that you have all the deep conversations with. It's the friend that you talk deeply with, but they don't judge. They kind of, they forgive you for whatever. They take your side on it. They, and they help you feel understood. You come away from that feeling just understood. Then the opposite side, you have your personal pusher friend, the more authoritative friend. And it might be harder to talk about deeper topics to this friend, but it's really important because this is the friend that's going to give you perspective. They might play devil's advocate and take the opposite side, but that might help you explore the idea a bit better. It might help you come up with a practical solution. Even for, like, sometimes, take like a relationship for an example. Sometimes you and your partner have a fight and you're just not moving, you're stuck, and you're just butting heads, and it's not working out at the moment. If you have this friend and he takes your partner's side and you can talk about that fight without the person there, it can help you because it can take the emotion out of it. So whether this is with a boss or with a partner, whoever, taking the, the person of contention out of the situation and discussing the topic with your friend instead, that can be super helpful. I promised to mention a rare trait that I personally find extremely valuable. 
And this trait can fall into any of the categories that we've already mentioned. And this is the trait of excitement first. This is the person who says awesome before they ask any details, before they ask why or when or where. They just say awesome because they're just delighted that you're moving. They're, the fact that you're moving, that you have motivation, that you have direction at all, it doesn't matter where you're going. It just matters that you're moving and they're delighted for you. So this is the friend like, you want to get a piercing? Awesome, it would really suit you. You want to go on a holidays? Cool, I've heard great things about that place. You want, you're starting a new job. Like, man, you're gonna own the place in like two years. Like, they don't know how lucky they are. You have a new partner. Again, they don't know how lucky they are and you deserve the best. Now I know like a lot of people will say this stuff anyway, but it's about finding the person that says it first. That doesn't put conditions on the fact that they got excited. Like you're going on holidays. Cool, when are you going? Uh, who are you going with? Uh, why did you pick there? I get it. Those, that's still a good friend. I'm not saying anything bad. It's still a really good person. I'm just saying that there's a certain effect that happens if you have a friend that just gets excited on the fact that you're moving at all. That there's none of these conditions put on the excitement. It's just excitement for the fact that you're moving. For the fact that you have momentum in any direction. I count myself extremely lucky to have had moments in time where I've had a friend like this. And I can't promise you that you'll find this type of friend. I hope you will. But maybe try and be this type of friend. Because like it's a magnetic trait. And I think just... I think the world could do with people like that. But that's just me, huh? <laughs> So that's it for today. Um, I hope you got something from this. Uh, I finally got to use one of my favorite kind of quotes of your mom helps you stand up and your dad pushes you forward. Um, so let me know what you thought on that. But like, let me know what you thought on the video in general, uh, because I do love hearing from you guys. And like the advice and the kind of feedback I'm getting is really helpful. Um, so thanks. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.